22, my beloved spake and said unto me, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, and the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear in the earth, the time of singing of birds is come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines, the tender grapes, give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O oh, my dove that are in the cleft of the rocks, in the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance. Let me hear the voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Isn't that beautiful? That's where the author of that song got this from. Isn't that beautiful? And, and really, if you check that out, it's talking about the rapture of the church. Isn't God wonderful? He, he uses Solomon to pin that. Solomon penned so many wonderful things in the Song of Solomon or the Song of Songs. What a good book that is. It would be fun one time to do a Wednesday night study on that. That's so much, so much good in it. I'll, I'll read it over and over a lot of times. That's beautiful, guys. Yeah. Thank you. You are amazing. So beautiful. So beautiful. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, God is good, isn't he? All the time, not sometime. He's always good. He's always faithful. Uh, let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, that wonderful name that is above every name that is named. And we thank you, Lord, for this very night. This is a good night, Lord. It's a good night in your house. It's always good in your house. Father, I thank you for your faithful that have gathered here this night. I ask that you bless them. Give them a joyful heart. Father, fill them up with your goodness and your mercy. Let them leave saying, it has been good to have been in the house of God. Wonderful Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen. You know, if you, if you ever listen to the news, I don't know if you listen to it much, but my dear husband likes to listen to Fox News in the morning. And so if I'm up there when he's awake, I, usually I'm downstairs, but if I'm up there, I got to listen to it. And uh, if you really listen to it, it, there's a lot of trouble out in the world. There's a lot of things going on. And some of us not only have trouble in the world, but we have trouble in our homes uh, with our children, maybe with our grandchildren, our husbands, our wives, our jobs. And, but those of us that are really, truly passionate, born-again Christians, we should be living a life of joy. We should be living a, a life of peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It shouldn't be just sometimes, you know, if things don't go right, I'm not happy. If things don't go right, I've lost my joy. I, I can't find my joy. I don't know where I left it. Well, things don't always work the way you want it to in this life. Not everything in this life is just what you ordered it to be. We live in a world, we live in a fallen world, but thank God we have a risen Savior. And those of us that are born again, passionate Christians, there's no reason why we can't live a life of cheerfulness, of joy, of happiness. You know, joy is a continual, continual, but you, you can be happy. Why not laugh sometimes? You, you don't have to be sour. You can laugh. You can smile. You, you can get to the place where, where you smile more even in the midst of a storm. You know, even the disciples, they, they were Jesus in the sleep in the boat. He, here he's sleeping through a storm. I think that's pretty awesome. He was sleeping, and the disciples saying, don't you care, Master? Sure he cared. He got up and rebuked the storm. Oh, you have little faith, you know? So when we go going through a storm, start rebuking it in the name of Jesus and get your joy, get your happiness. Be, be, don't be sad. Don't be grumpy. Some of you, dear wives, when your husbands come home, how do you act when they come in the door? You know, you, you don't have, when they come in the door, you don't have to say, you can't believe what happened today, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, and you tell them a whole list of what everything went wrong in that day. Why not give them a hug and a kiss and your wife too and tell them the good things that went on? Tell them the goodness of God, the mercy of God. Oh, honey, you don't believe the scripture I read today. This was a good scripture. You want to hear, hear what I read, what I got from God? That scripture has carried me all day. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Isn't that what Nehemiah said? Here's Sanballat and all of them were against Nehemiah, and they were telling him to come off the wall. And he says, why should I come down to you when I'm doing a good thing for God? 
So, why, you know, every time the enemy wants you to get off of the wall of where God has placed you, and the enemy comes and wants you to get down to the low life again, why live on the low life? God paid the price. You know, he sent his son, his only son, Jesus, to pay the price for our joy, for us to have a continual feast in the Lord. Why live in that? You know, I found out a long time ago, I can argue and fight with my husband, and wife, with my husband or my wife if you want to. You can have a continual argument or you can have a continual blessing. You can argue with your kids. Why do that? You know, I have found out being a a mother-in-law, a mother-in-law doesn't need to be griping and complain about their son or daughter-in-laws. You bless them in the name of Jesus. If you, if you will bless instead of curse, you're going to see a lot of joy come back to you. Why not bless your job? Why not bless the people on your job that, go, that work with you? Why not bless instead of cursing them? The Bible says that blessings and cursing should not come out of the same mouth. So the words we speak, that we have to be very cautious what comes out of our mouth. We need to have sweet water coming out of our mouth continually. Because you, you, you speak bad about things, you're not only cursing, what you're cursing things by your mouth. So you've got to watch what you say with your mouth. A mouth is an evil thing, the book of James says. It is unruly. Yeah, uh, I remember years ago we do this skit in children's church where we'd have a big tongue come out, just a tongue, and we take a whip and beat the tongue. <laughs> get that tongue in line with the word of God. If that tongue speaks bad, give it a good spanking. Tell it to straighten out. You know, you want to be happy, don't you? You want to be joyful. Well, it comes from your heart. And, and it starts in the mind, and then it gets in the heart. And if your heart is full of God, if you're full of God, you're going to be full of this wonders of this life in him. It's in him. Well, let's turn to Psalm 30. Uh, Proverbs 15, 13 says, A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. So we can have sorrow in our heart. How do you get sorrow in your heart? By meditating on what is wrong. By meditating what you don't have in your life. You look at somebody else, what they have, and you can meditate upon that. You have to meditate upon God's word, and that will keep your heart strong. You don't want a broken spirit. You don't want to see there, there's a thing that we can lust after things of the world that doesn't get us any place. I remember years and years ago, my dear husband and I, we would drive around the block and we would look at this house and we would park in, it was for sale, and we'd look at the house and we'd think, wow, we'd like a house like that. We'd drive around the park in the back and park at the back of the house and we'd look at that house and we'd think, wow, we'd like that house. Wish we had that house. And, and it was for sale for a long, long time. They couldn't sell it. When I went in it, I found out why. And they couldn't sell it. And so finally, we decided we, we had a nice house down the street from my mom. My son lives in that house now. And it was a nice house. It would have been perfect the rest of our life. And so we decided that we'd go in that house and look at it. And we loved the house, but it was just a lot wrong with it. And we ended up getting that house not because God told us to get the house, but because we wanted the house. We had two house payments, one house payment of almost 2000 a month, another house payment of 400 something a month, and we, couldn't, and we didn't sell the one for a while. And it was the worst time because we lusted after something. But finally, God worked it all out. But, you know, you, you don't want to lust after something because it can break your spirit. And you can go and get it, and it's wish you hadn't gotten it. Okay, Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart does good. And you know this one, like medicine. But then if you go on to read it, But a broken spirit dries the bones. So we read in Proverbs 15, 13 how a broken spirit, we can have sorrow. It can also dry the bones. If you've been wanting something for a long time and praying for something a long time and the answer hasn't come, 
your spirit can get weary. You can get weary, and you can get to the place where you don't want to pray anymore. You don't want to seek God, and you get to that place. What do you have to do? Well, let's read Psalm 30, and I'll tell you what you can do. In verse 4, sing unto the Lord. Sing. Sing. I, I sang this one song all the time, and I didn't realize my, my little great-granddaughter that lives with us, I, I uh, started singing it today to her, and she's singing the whole song with me. And I says, baby, how did you know that song? She says, Nan, you sing it day and night. I think I know it by now. <laughs> and, and she does. But, you know, you can sing, sing, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. That's us Christians, his saints. And give thanks. So to keep our spirit strong, to keep us from having a broken spirit, a sorrowful spirit, we must sing to the Lord. You sing to him. And maybe you're like me, I don't sing the best, but I sing anyway. And give thanks. Thank you, Lord. We, we count our losses instead of counting our blessings. Quit counting your losses and start counting your blessings. You have so many blessings. You live in the United States of America. You're a Christian. You're not going to go to hell one day if you stay faithful to God. You're going to see Jesus face to face. One day, you're going to enter into that glorious kingdom. And how can you not live every day full of joy knowing that you're going to see Jesus face to face and that you're going to be in heaven? What a place. What a wonderful place that is. We are blessed above all people. And you start, start naming your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for my job. Thank you for my church. Thank you for my pastors. Thank you, Lord, for what you have given me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just thank him for things. Sing unto the Lord. Thank him. And if you're down after you've done that a little while, you won't be down anymore. I can guarantee you if you keep thanking and you keep singing, no matter what you're going through in your life, all of a sudden that broken spirit will start lifting up. All of a sudden that weariness, that tiredness will start lifting up on you and you'll have joy in your heart. I can guarantee it. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, give thanks in the remembrance of his holiness. Now, this is another thing, to remember him, how great he is, how awesome he is, the price that was paid on the cross. Remember what he has done for you. Count, count that a great thing that the incarnation where where he became a man. He took on our feelings. He took on our firmities. Everything that came against us, he took that. You know, you know the story that he became sad for us to be happy. He became ill so we can be well. Everything he did for us. And, and you know, you can think, well, sometimes you think, it's just, it's just not enough. But it is enough. It is more than enough. You're Jesus. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, what a great God he is. How wonderful and holy and glorious our God is. How can we live with a broken spirit, a sorrowful spirit? We can't live that way because that's not the way God made us to live. He made us to have a continual feast in him. And the only way you'll have that continual feast is to turn your eyes off of self and turn your eyes on Jesus. And if you look at him, in the fullness of his glory and his grace, and you keep your eyes on him, what a great God he is. What a wonderful God. I, I, I ministered with this dear man for, for many years, and he lives with Jesus now. And, and, and this dear man, we were the children's pastors at his church and did the youth, and he went through many, many things. He, he lost his leg, and I uh, had much problem with his leg in the, in the war in Vietnam. But he, he continually would never say that he was in pain. He would never say all the things he went through. He had children that did him wrong and things he went through, church members. But he had a continual feast in God. I remember when, he, when we came there, the, the power of God was so strong on him that he would walk into the room. He was so close with God. He would walk and just walk into the sanctuary, and if he would walk by somebody, they'd fall down out under the power of God. 
because the anointing on him was so strong that I, I would see people come in full of the devil and they try to hit him and they couldn't get through a wall. They couldn't touch him. I would see deaf ears healed every service, blind eyes opened. I'd see the lame walk. Uh, I'd see so many wonderful things. He got to the place where he could not see anything outside of Jesus. He looked continually to Jesus. And if we could get to that place in him, oh, what a place that would be. He didn't consider that his leg at times where the, 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 the other leg was, he, he couldn't walk at times and it got so bad, but he didn't consider that. He didn't consider what he was going through. Instead, he considered Jesus and his kingdom. If we could walk that way, if we could talk that way, if we could just be, be that followers of Christ, like, you know, you read about Paul in the book of Acts, everything he went through. Jesus told him, I'm going to show you how many things you must suffer for my kingdom. But Paul was continually having a continual feast in Jesus. He, he went through many things of, of believers and non-believers, but he went through them. And he lived a life full of the Holy Ghost, full of the power of God. He spoke the word. I, I, love, I love it when, when he was preaching, you know, the story, and the young man fell to the ground and he died. He, went, he ran down and raised him from the bit dead and went back up and preached some more. My, my. Today, if we have a sermon past 30 minutes, it's like painfully enduring. I will endure to the end, you know. <laughs> You, you, have you ever been there? I'm going to endure to the end, you know. Uh, let's, let's read some more of this. This is so good. Verse uh, 10. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me, Lord. Be thou my helper. That's another thing. You have to get so close to God that you can say, Lord, I thank you that you have mercy on me. Your mercy is upon me. Your love is upon me. Be my helper, Lord. Get me through these situations. And when you learn to trust in him, above all else. you got to trust in him. I know sometimes you can lose your trust. Since we had that, that, that wreck with the taxi cab, I'll, I'll be driving, and if my dear husband or somebody does, I'll go, ah, watch the car, watch the car. And, and he said to, have, said to me, the other day, honey, you don't trust me. I said, no, it's not that I don't trust you. I don't trust the car coming at us. <laughs> I don't know what that guy's going to do. And it's okay if I'm driving, but somebody else is driving. And if I sit in the back seat where we got hit, I'm like, so I got to trust. You know, you got to learn to trust. And if you can trust Jesus and you can live your life trusting in him, not worrying about what car's coming at you or what somebody's going to do to you, and you just trust in him, be my helper, oh God. I can't, but you can. I can't, but you can. I can do all things through you who gives me strength. It's not my strength. It's his strength. It's not my help. It's his help. And we get to the place where we so rely on Jesus that you have a continual feast in him. You're so excited just to have a, a moment of time with him, to get alone with him and let him know how much you love him and how much you trust him. And, and sometimes we don't trust the Lord because we didn't trust our parents. Have you ever been there and done that? Yeah. See, my, my dear mom and dad, they were the type, they'd drop me off someplace and they'd forget to pick me up again. <laughs> and so I'd be the last one picked up wherever we'd go. So they'd forget to pick me up at school, and I, I'd walk home from downtown Granite City to the house, you know. And they'd say, oh, we forgot. <laughs> you get out at 3 o'clock. <laughs> that was before the days of cell phones, you know. And, and, and so I learned not to trust too well. But then when I had an encounter with Jesus, with the spirit of the living God, and he said, will you trust me? Will you trust me? Listen to this, verse 11. Thou hast turned for me my mourning. Anything that has brought me sorrow, no matter what it might be that I have sorrow over past experiences. And, you know, I had the most wonderful parents in the world except that. And some of you have had parents that have done terrible things to you, have ridiculed you and belittled you. They've done terrible things. Just put that behind you. Forget about it. Just go on. Don't live in that. Don't live in what somebody has called you because that's not what Jesus calls you. 
He calls you my beloved. He calls you the accepted. He calls you the blessed. He calls you the whole. He calls you the redeemed. He doesn't call you what somebody else called you. He calls you all those wonderful names because he loves you. He paid the price for you. You don't have to be somebody else for him to love you. He made you just like you are. He, and he made you perfect in him, in Christ. For you have turned from me my morning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and, listen to this, clothed me with gladness. Wow. I am clothed in him. They say, what are those white robes that they have on in the book of Revelation? Those are the righteous acts of the saints. Wow, so you are clothed in gladness. You are clothed in those white robes. You are clothed in him. You are blessed. Turn to John 16. While you're turning there, Proverbs 15, 15 says, All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart has a continual feast. So if I keep my heart merry, I have a continual feast. Have you ever been to a smorgasbord and they've got all this food there and anything you can have, you can take it and you can eat it. Anything you want on there because you paid the price and you can eat it. And you can just decide, what do I want? And you can pile your plate up as full as you want. And you can have a feast. Well, you've got to realize with Jesus, I can have a feast of his mercy, of his goodness, of his blessings, of his love, of his care for me. I can just pile my plate full of all of that. And I can feast on that. I can love it. You know, now, my dear husband, we went to this place Many years ago, we were in West Palm Beach, and we stopped at this hotel, and we had our daughter Carissa with us, and this was a beautiful hotel called The Breakers, and we went in, and it was so beautiful, and they had a, a breakfast, and there were people in there eating their breakfast, and my husband says, honey, you want to eat there? And I said, I guess so, you know, thinking it'd probably be maybe $15 at the most. So we went in there, and, and my husband was having this feast. He was all kinds of weird things all over, just stuff I would not put in my mouth. He has this plate filled up. My daughter Carissa has her plate filled up. I found a jelly donut. Matter of fact, I found three jelly donuts. And I took that back to the table, and I'm eating the donuts. And he said, well, didn't you like anything? I don't like scrambled eggs, and I don't like sausage, and I don't like that fish stuff, and I don't like those other stuff, and those, those potatoes are weird. What's on those potatoes? What they put on them? And so all I could find I, I liked were those donuts, and they weren't even good jelly donuts. They were hard. And so we're going to pay, and they brought the check, and it was $75 per person. That was the most expensive jelly donuts I have ever eaten in my whole life. <laughs> and we had no idea that it would be $75 per person. And I said, well, honey, at least you got your full. <laughs> You're filled up. <laughs> so that was my time. I ate an expensive jelly donut. Uh, <laughs> John 16, 32. Behold, the hour, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Now, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are in this life, you are not alone, because he's with you. So that's another key. Remember, he is always with you to keep a continual feast, to keep your spirit from being broken, keep your spirit alive and healthy in him. He's always with you. If he was with Jesus, I am his son also. He loves me as much as he loves Jesus. I am his daughter. You're his son. So I can have a continual feast on him if I remember that. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, in me, you may have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulation. Of course you will. Whatever you do in the world, you're going to have tribulation. Arguing is of the world. Fighting and bickering is of the world. Uh, lack in any place of your life is of the world. But he says here, I like this, in the world, you shall have tribulation. But there's always this but. Be of good cheer. I can just see Jesus saying it. Be of good cheer. Oh, come on. Be of good cheer. Cheer up. Get yourself up. Don't stay down. Be of good cheer. 
Be happy. Be full of faith. Be full of joy. Be full in Jesus. Be full in him. Think on Jesus. Think on the things that he has done for you. Think on his love. Think on his mercy. Think on his goodness. Be full. Cheer yourself up. Be of good cheer, he says right here. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And if he has overcome the world, I have overcome the world. So I'm not going to live in it. If I live in it, I lose. You want to win? Live in Christ continually. Watch your mouth. Keep your mouth. Keep your mouth straight. Keep your mouth straight. There are things you say that you shouldn't say. There are things you have said to people that you shouldn't say. Don't say them. Because see what happens, you speak those words to somebody, then the enemy has them rehearse those words over and over again. They hear those words, and they rehearse them, unless they're able to take authority over the words and break it off of them. So you've got to be careful what you speak. Speak joy. Speak happiness. Speak wonderful. Uh, I, I teach my, my children and, and, and my little granddaughter, Aria, she's such a joy. And, and I tell her, Aria, look. Look at this wonderful world we live in. Look, there's a cloud show today. Let's look at the clouds. At night, Aria, look up at the stars that God made. He did that for us. We can't count them all, but look. They're beautiful. Look at that moon. How great it is. Aria, let's pray. Let's seek the face of God. Let's, let's believe God for miracles. Aria, you're so smart. You're so beautiful. You can do anything in Christ. He gives you that strength. You are such an overcomer in this world. You never have to live under because you're, you're not the tail. You're the head. You're not beneath. You're above. Everything you touch, Aria, shall prosper. I used to tell my son, son Tony all this, too. And when, when we adopted him, he was so defeated. He would stand in his bedroom, and one day I went in, and he's banging his head on the wall. And I said, what's the matter? He was three years old. He said, I'm just as stupid, and I can't say the words that he said. I said, no, you're not. You're a child of God. God lives in you. You can do anything. Anything is possible for you, Tony. You just got to see it to believe it. If you can see it, Tony, you can have it. I can't get him not to talk faith. <laughs> he can talk so much faith, sometimes it can drive you mad. But you, you, you feed it into him at that age. You feed faith into him. Believe those of you that have little ones, you're so blessed. You can, you can speak the word of God over them, and you can see miracles happen in their life. They don't see the negative. They see the, they see the positive. And if we keep speaking the word of God, even at our ages, no matter what age you are, you keep speaking the word of God over you, you see victory. You see life. You don't see death. You see wonders. And sure, we go through things. Things happen in this life. We lose loved ones. We, we might lose finances. We might even lose houses or cars. But I can tell you one thing. Whatever you lose, if you get, it'll come back to you if you believe God to bring it back. You lost a house. You believe God. You believe God. You see it with your eyes. You can see it. You might not be visibly here, for we don't look at the things which are seen. They're temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Think on these things, the Word of God says. Think on these things. We have time for just a couple of more scriptures. Uh, turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. This is another key. Remember, God is always watching you and looking at you. He's always seeing you. I don't know how it happens. I don't understand how God can have millions and millions of children, but yet he can still see me. I don't understand it, but I know he does. I don't know how, but he does by the Spirit. He's every place. And he looks at us to see, to help us. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So his ears and eyes are open to my prayer. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? But 
if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are you, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. In other words, know that he's God. Know that he's powerful. Know that he's for me. Know that he'll bless me. Know that my God loves me. Sanctify him in your heart. Don't let the enemy get in your heart and break your spirit. Dry your bones up. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Be always ready to witness to somebody, to tell somebody. In 1 Peter uh, 4, verse 14, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. And on thy part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, which I know we're not. I don't think anybody's going to leave here tonight and go murder somebody, okay? I know that for a fact. Let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer. Or, and then it gets down a little lower here. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. So we don't want to do any of that, okay? Yeah, yet if any man suffer as a Christian... Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So we always remember, wherever we are, whatever we do, we glorify God. James 5.13, if any among you afflict it, let him pray. If any marry, let him sing psalms. How do you stay merry? By singing unto the Lord, by thanking God, by giving him honor and glory, knowing he's always with you, knowing he's always listening to you. Sanctify him in your hearts. Cry after him, Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God, and you know this, is not, listen to this, is not meat and drink, but righteousness, righteousness peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. One last scripture. Psalm 1611, in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures, come on up, pleasures forevermore. John 1511, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. 1 Peter 1 8, whom having not seen you love, and whom though now you see him not, yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And then Paul said, this is my favorite, Paul said in Acts 20, 24, but none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear unto myself, that I may finish my race with joy. I got to finish this life with joy. You start out good as born-again Christians. Then the world comes in, things and cares come in, and what happens? You lose your joy. If you've lost your joy, your spirit's broken. Your spirit's sorrowful. So tonight, I just believe, you know, you, you might not be right there, but maybe you touch on it at times. So I believe with all my heart, God is saying, come on, come on. Let's get some joy. Let's let God bless us. We're going to stand up and sing this before we go.